want to welcome you to the online church. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. And so many of you are out there. Praise God. I send a shout out to all of my friends, all of you, to your families, to your loved ones. I want you to know that Jesus loves you and so do I. Praise God. On behalf of my precious wife, Jackie, here at Back to Basics Online Church, we give you greetings. Praise God. The singer said, Jesus, my strong tower. Jesus, my mighty battle axe. My friend in trouble. When nights are long and, 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 and days get cold, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. What a way to live, ladies and gentlemen, letting Jesus be the center of of your joy. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God who cannot fail. Things might be looking rough in some of your lives right now. Uh, Satan might be hitting you with everything he's got, but I guarantee you in the name of Jesus that victory is yours. Victory is yours. Another writer said, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. In fact, in fact, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, he said, thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory in Christ Jesus. Thanks be unto God. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing today, victory belongs to you. Victory is mine. Victory is yours. We have the victory. Why do we have the victory? Because Christ died on the cross for us. He was buried in the grave. And on the third day, he arose from the dead, and he said, All power has been given unto me by my Father. Jesus rose from the dead. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him. Praise God. Victory belongs to us. And Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So we have victory, ladies and gentlemen. We are not defeated. We have victory. Welcome to the online church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We give God the praise. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I'm so glad to see you, my friends. I'm so glad to know that you're there and that you're trusting in the Lord. Our trust is in the mighty God, the God we serve. He has never lost a battle. He's never lost a case. He's a bridge over troubled waters. He's our high tower. In times of trouble, we hide ourselves in the secret of his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. We make our trust. And so we thank God. He's a mighty deliverer. He will deliver you. No situation is too difficult for him. We serve the mighty God. And we want to tell our friends, our family, our relatives, our loved ones, put your trust in in the Lord. Don't give up. Don't quit. Wait on the Lord. We're learning uh, how to wait on the Lord. We give a shout out to the Baggett family in Alabama. We give a shout out to the McDaniels in, in uh, Tennessee, I think you are. Praise God. Uh, give a shout out to Megan and her family in California, all the way on the West Coast. We give a shout out to Terry in Colorado. We give a shout out to all of our friends. Ryan up in Pennsylvania, Dustina and her family, praise God, in Tennessee. We give a shout out to the many listeners. We give a shout out to our friends online with us in Kenya, in Botswana, in African nations, in Europe. We give a shout out to Mimo in Belgium. We give a shout out to Anna and Richard in in Sweden, we give a shout out to our friends all over the globe, all across this nation. We give a shout out to our friends in Canada, Sandra Lee, and all of our friends in Canada. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this new day. We praise God. Well, let us pray, and then we're going to get on with our service. I've got a mighty, powerful message for you today. It's a message that will change your life. Ladies and gentlemen, the message today will change the lives 
of your family, even your loved ones. So we want to ask the Holy Spirit for his anointing, for his presence, that he take the lead. Hallelujah. As we humble ourselves beneath his mighty hand. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, and we honor you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, we come before you. We ask that you forgive us of all of our sins. All of us have sinned against you and come short of your glory. Have mercy on us, Lord God. Now, Lord, stretch forth your mighty hand today. Lord God, if there be any online today who is not saved, any who are listening to the, the recording who are not saved, help them to receive salvation by faith in the name of Jesus Lord God, I'm asking you today to stretch forth your mighty hand to heal. Heal the sick, Lord. No matter what they're suffering from, heal them today, Lord God. We believe you to, hallelujah, we believe you to do this, Lord God, and deliver any who are bound. Father, bind Satan and his raging forces. We bind the enemy in the name of Jesus. We take authority over uh, the enemy. We cast down all vain imaginations. We cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And in the name of Jesus, we bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, take over. We yield this service to you. Holy Spirit, come and take over and guide us and let your will be done. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Amen. 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 Well, bless God. Before we get into the service, we want to announce that we have a special uh, guest next week, a special guest next week who will be moderating the service and, and a special guest preacher. We're uh, bringing on our own Dustina Branham. Dustina is going to be with us next week, and she's going to be sharing the word of God. Hallelujah. She's going to uh, share the word, and Dustina, you're on now, and, and, and uh, here's something you might want to make a note of. Just highlight your name with your, with your cursor, and then right-click, and you can make yourself the presenter. Dustina, come on and introduce yourself to everybody. Praise God. Uh, we're gonna Hello, ask you can to, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, good. Is your webcam... Alex? You have your webcam? Uh, no, sir. For some reason, my internet. Okay, make sure you have that on next week, okay? Yes, sir. I okay. think it's the weather. It's been raining quite a bit here. Okay. Okay, so everybody, uh, we want to, you know, listen to Dustina next week. Dustina is going to be here with us, and a special treat, we're going to have a message by our own, uh, her own, Nathan. Nathan's only 12 years old. Our guest preacher next week will be Nathan uh, Rainville Branham. Nathan is going to be preaching the word, Dustina's son. Dustina, tell us a little bit about Nathan and what they should look for next week. Well, hopefully Nathan will be feeling well. He's not doing too good today. We've all kind of got the coop. So if you, coop, if you could, please pray for us. Yes. Also, he... We have been working on doing the armor of God, and he's been practicing. He's wanting to let people know how to fight the wicked, the enemy, through putting on the arms that is part of the spiritual warfare that we face each and every day. Just as we are right now with this sickness, we have to put on that armor of God, and we have to fight the enemy for the inflictions that he puts upon us so he is we're both kind of feeling led to give our testimony as well I don't know you know how the Holy Spirit works you get one thing and he wants to change it so we'll see what happens next Sunday and we're looking forward to it and we're very grateful and thankful for the opportunity to give the word to everybody. And we'd appreciate y'all's prayers and help us through it. So we thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Dustina. 
Thank you, Dustina. This is Dustina Branham, ladies and gentlemen, and she's one of our students in the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy. She will be our guest next week with uh, uh, the ministry. She will be directing the service next week. We can't wait. Megan says, woo-hoo, I can't wait, Dustina and Nathan. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to miss next week's service with 12-year-old Nathan coming on. He's a powerful preacher, 12 years old, ladies and gentlemen. Young Nathan will be preaching next week. And God, we believe, God, we pray for Dustina and Nathan right now in the name of Jesus that you deliver them from that spirit of affliction and infirmity that has hit their household. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We command that you take your hands off. Uh, Dustina and Mike and their household in the name of Jesus and deliver them Lord God we pray and we thank you and we bless you Father God prepare them for ministering next week and 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 do mighty works in them this week Lord God and we also pray that you'll bless our listeners t today bless each and every one Lord God you are so wonderful you are so wonderful we give you the praise the glory and the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, bless God. Bless God. Bless God. You don't want to miss next week. You don't want to miss next week. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors that 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time next week, you are in for a treat. I say a treat. Praise God. Well, open your Bibles to Job. Job chapter 1, Job, the book of Job, chapter 1. I'm going to read, uh, uh, I'm going to read extensively th from Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2. So listen to this word. It is very important that you listen to this word for this word is the foundation for the next several weeks in my series, my series this is a spiritual warfare series. This is the series will teach you how to battle the enemy and win. Ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, you will get the victory in Jesus' name because of the word of God and the promises and the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of God. We're going to plant a foundation in the word today. And uh, uh, Nathan's going to be preaching next week. Uh, he and his, his mom um, on, on putting on the full armor of God. We're in spiritual warfare. Ladies and gentlemen, God is prevent, presenting something so that your household can win, so that your household can stay on top, so that you can maintain the victory over the enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about deliverance and, and setting households free in the next several weeks. We're going to be talking about how you can get your loved ones free from Satan's bondage. This is our theme for the next several weeks, how you can get your loved ones free from Satan's bondage. If your loved one is sick, you can get them healed. If your loved one is, is going through drug addiction, you can get them delivered. If your loved one, uh, uh, if your husband's cheating on you, you can get him back home in the name of Jesus. If your wife is cheating on you, you can get her back home in the name of Jesus. If your children are strung out on opioids, you can get them delivered in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a rebellious child, in your household and that child is not doing right just messing up just shaming the family just embarrassing you can get that child whether that child is a, a youngster or a grown-up you can get that child delivered you ladies and gentlemen we're going to be talking about how you can get your lost loved ones saved in the name of Jesus and with each of these messages, I will have a special prayer that I can email to you that you can pray, and you pray that prayer over your loved one or over your household and watch what God will do. So we're going to lay the foundational scripture for the next several weeks, ladies and gentlemen. We might be talking about two months of preaching so that we can get families delivered, marriages delivered, uh, 
wayward spouses to, to surrender and do what they're supposed to do. Fathers uh, who are not doing right to do right. Mothers who are not doing right to do right. Children who are not doing right to do right. Uh, we're we're going to lay a ground groundwork, a foundation so that you can get your loved ones delivered from opioid addiction, drug addiction, smoking reefer, smoking, drinking, uh, 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 drunkenness, uh, alcoholism, uh, uh, sexual sins. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, can show, we will show you in the next several weeks with the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus how you can get uh, anyone in your household or your family, uh, loved ones who are practicing homosexuality or lesbianism, you can get them delivered, ladies and gentlemen, by paying attention to the, the foundational scripture we're giving today and the scriptures we give you week by week as we take one item at a time. We're going to work uh, soon on marriages. We're going to work on wayward children. We're going to work on rebellious children. We're going to work on people with drug addictions. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in a household and someone is abusing you, you can be delivered from that spirit of abuse, and that person abusing you can get set free. So we're looking at powerful work, spiritual warfare work, and the Holy Ghost is the one who brings the deliverance based on your trust in the Word of God. So let's look at the book of Job and the key word in this reading that we're going to read. We're going to look at the hedge, H-E-D-G-E, -E, the hedge, how you can build a hedge around your family, how you can build a hedge around your church, how you can build a hedge around your job, how you can build a hedge around the nation. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we can pull down strongholds in Washington, D.C. by building a hedge around our president, around our Congress, around our leaders. We can build a hedge around this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, God promises us. He gives us a promise. If he can just find, listen to this, if God can just find one person, one man, or one woman who will make up the hedge, God will will deliver. I want to repeat that because you need to know how important you are to God. I'm saying to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in the listening audience, whether you're here in the United States or in any other nation, if God can find one person so that he can make up a hedge around a family, make up a hedge around a church, make up a hedge around a nation. God will perform it, ladies and gentlemen. So you are important to God. You may say, well, there's nothing I can do about the drug situation. There's nothing I can do about my marriage. There's nothing I can do about my children uh, on drugs. There's nothing I can do about these sexual sins. Oh, yes, there is. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says in second in 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 second uh, Chronicles sixteen first Chronicles sixteen nine, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth seeking to find himself, someone whose heart is perfect toward him. God's eyes are searching right now. And uh, he also says in Ezekiel, he says, And I look for a man among them that I might make up the hedge. And I could not find one. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will put yourself in a position to let God use you in your family, in your marriage, in your community, in your church, in your nation, if you'll say, Lord, here am I, if you'll be like Isaiah and say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what the doctors have said about that person in your family. It does not matter what kind of uh, problems that are hitting your household. It does not matter what's hitting your business, what's coming against your church, what's coming against you. Ladies and gentlemen, God is looking for one person who will say, Lord, here I am. I volunteer. Use me. And watch what God will do. Ladies and gentlemen, watch what God is going to do in this ministry in the next several weeks, even months as we minister the word of God. God promises us his word will not return until him void. Well, Pastor Carter, you got me all upset, all, all excited and anticipating, so read the word to me, and that's what I'm going to do. Job chapter 1, listen to this. There was a man in the land of Uz, 
whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and hated evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Incidentally, it is believed that Job was the son of Issachar. In other words, he was the grandson of Isaac. He was one of the twelve. His father was one of the twelve sons of, of Isaac. I'm sorry, of Jacob. Of Jacob. So, um, let me let me get the Jacob. Jacob had the uh, twelve twelve sons. So Issachar was the grandson of Abraham and the son of Jacob. And Job was the grandson of Jacob. Verse four. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Job's children were party goers. They wined and dined. They didn't care about God. But listen, and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Job knew his children didn't love the Lord. Job knew his children were sinners. He knew his children were rebellious. But every day he got up and he burnt a lamb or a goat. He made a sacrifice for each one of his sons and daughters. He sanctified them. And he believed that if he would pray for them and sanctify an offering for them unto the Lord, the Lord would have mercy on his children. Now there was a day, listen to this, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, meaning the angels, including the fallen angels. There was a day in which they came and presented themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. God said, Devil, where have you been? The devil said, I've been all over the earth, walking up and down on the earth. And the Lord said unto Satan, Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of you, you're having problems. A lot of times you can't put your finger on the cause of the problem. You wonder, why is this sickness in my household? Why is my loved one afflicted? Why am I going through this? Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and hateth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear you for naught? Have you not made an hedge about him? Job, Satan told uh, 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 God, uh, Job doesn't have anything to fear. He, he's got everything made. You built a hedge around him. This word hedge is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Satan accused God. He said, you built a hedge around him. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and substance. his substance is increased in the land. But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to your faith. face. Satan challenged God. He said, you've got a hedge around Job. But if you put your hand, take away that hedge, hedge, he'll curse you. He'll curse you to your face, God. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. God released Job unto Satan so that Satan could try Job. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, God had enough faith in Job. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to bless you. This is going to take you over the top. In the next several weeks, this is going to take you over the top. In every challenge you face, in everything that comes against your household, no matter what kind of sickness you experience, God is going to take you over the top. Listen to the Word. The Word says, Behold, all that he hath 
is in your power. God released uh, uh, Job unto Satan to be tested by Satan, ladies and gentlemen. But God said, only do not touch his body. Don't touch his body. You can try him. He And I, I have faith in Job, God is saying. Job will not let me down. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the things you're going through, whether you're in Nigeria or whether in your Nicaragua, whether you're in uh, England or Ethiopia, whether you're in the United States or Canada, some of the problems you're going through is because God has permitted Satan to test you. The scripture says, for the testing of our faith. Oh, I'm glad you got that. I'm glad you got that quickening. Glory to God. The testing of our faith worketh patience and experience, patience experience and experience hope. Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, they must suffer persecution. Somebody said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I say, joy comes in the morning. So you just hold on, ladies and gentlemen, and hold out. I know the doctors are shaking their head. I know the doctors are saying this. I know they're going to try this. Uh, 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 strategy. They're going to try this, but God has the whole situation in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. God just released uh, Job to be tested by the devil. And God's got confidence in you. No matter who you are, God has the confidence in you. Some of your marriages are looking shaky. Some of you are being abused. Some of you are being mistreated. Some of you do not get the respect of your children. Some of you may not get the respect of your husband. Some of you may not get the respect of your wife. Some of you fear that your spouse is cheating <coughs> on you. But you just hold on. You just hold on. God has the faith in you that you will trust him. God has the faith in you because you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and you study the word and you know the word and you know that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. You know that you have the victory in Christ Jesus, for God has given you the victory. You just hold on and see the salvation of the Lord. Well, as, as we go through the rest of uh, chapter 1 in Job, you'll see that Job lost everything he had. His children were partying, uh, 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 drinking, celebrating, feasting, and the whole house <coughs> caved in on them. All of Job's animals, his donkeys, his camels, his sheep, his goats, everything that he had was destroyed by the devil. The devil just came in. Because God gave the devil permission to touch Job's possessions, but not touch his body. The devil challenged God, ladies and gentlemen. He said, if you let me work with Job, let me take away his stuff. Let me take away his bank account. Let me repossess his car. Let me uh, uh, repossess his home. <clears throat> let me make him, put him on the unemployment line. Let me uh, strip his children of, of their college scholarships. I'll have him cursing you. That was Satan's challenge to God. Ladies and gentlemen, God has the confidence in you that no matter what comes your way, you're not going to quit on Jesus. Why? Because Jesus did not quit on you on Calvary. Jesus suffered and bled and died, gave his life for you and me. He took all of our sins, our guilt, and our shame in his body on the cross. The scripture says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and with his stripes you were healed. You, some of you are sick right now. The doctors have given you a bad report, but the scripture says with Jesus' stripes you were already healed. So trust in the Lord. God's got confidence in you, ladies and gentlemen, that you're going to be faithful. You're going to stand upon the solid rock. You're going to stand upon the word of God. You're not going to give in. You're not going to cave in. God has the confidence in you that you're going to walk by faith 
and not by sight. You're not going to look at your circumstances. You're not going to look at the pain you feel. You're going to keep your eyes on Jesus. You're going to keep your heart fixed on Jesus. I believe this message is helping somebody already. I believe that uh, no matter what you're going through, you see the victory. You taste the victory for God has given you the victory. You just hold on and hold out. Somebody said, hold out your light. You heaven-bound soldier, hold out your light, you heaven-bound soldier. Let your light shine around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, when we look at Job and how he handled these circumstances, we can get a witness that we too can do the same thing, the same thing. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, it got so bad in Job's house that the devil took everything that Job had, and then Job's wife said to Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Ladies and gentlemen, even his wife gave up on him. Ladies and gentlemen, if your wife gives up on you, you keep on trusting the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let anyone or anything separate you from the love of God. If your best friend leaves you, don't quit on Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if your husband leaves you, don't quit on Jesus. If your wife leaves you, don't quit on Jesus. If your children never call you, don't quit on Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Job chapter 2, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord asked him, where are you coming from? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Here again, verse 3 of chapter 2, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one who fears God and hates evil, and still, God says, and still, after all you've done to him, and still, he holds fast to his integrity, although you moved me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life, skin for skin. But put forth your hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. The devil said, yeah, but you let me touch his body. He'll curse you to your face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Ladies and gentlemen, so Satan went forth from the presence of God and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took a pot's herd. Job had to take a piece of clay and scrape himself clean from these wounds. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, his wife, Job's wife said unto him, do you still maintain your integrity? You, stay, you still think you're somebody? His wife challenged him, ladies and gentlemen. His wife, his helpmate, said, you still think you're something? You still think you got a, a relationship with God? God has left you. Look at you. You're just a mess. She said, why don't you just curse God and die? Job said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this, the scripture says, in all this, ladies and gentlemen, Job did not sin with his lips. In all this, all the things that he went through. The Bible says he was sitting on the town dump, the place called Gehenna, and, and, and uh, just sitting out there, his wounds, pus running out of his wounds, dogs licking his wounds. And this man who was so, uh, so huge, so large, so rich, so wealthy, so powerful, so godly, he's sitting out there dumbfounded, staring into space, wondering what has happened to me. Job had no clue, ladies and gentlemen. He had no clue that God had been challenged by Satan concerning Job's integrity. And ladies and gentlemen, when you go through, you and I, we have no clue about the spiritual warfare in the heavenlies. We have no clue 
of the challenge that Satan has made to God concerning us. You, we have no clue uh, when God releases Satan to oppress us. But God has the confidence in us, ladies and gentlemen, because we've been born again by the Spirit of God, and we have the Holy Ghost living inside of us. God has confidence that whatever comes our way, we can endure it. The scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no clue about this thing called spiritual warfare. I'm trying to teach about spiritual warfare, but we have no clue about the dimensions of spiritual warfare we have no clue about all the things going on in the spirit realm but God knows God knows we have no clue as to what is coming against us we have no clue about the power of those powers and principalities rule of spirits spiritual wickedness in heavenly places we have no clue about the demons assigned against us against our household against our marriage against our health against our children, but our trust is in the Lord. The Bible says, blessed is that man or woman who makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud, but such as turn aside to lies. I'm glad we have no clue about the magnanimity uh, of, of spiritual warfare directed against us because a lot of us, if we saw what was in the heavenly realm, if we saw in the spirit realm, if we saw the numerous number of demons assigned against us, if we saw Satan's strategy against us, many of us will cave in. But the Bible tells us to keep our eyes on Jesus. Look upon me. Peter and John told the, the crippled man, look unto me, silver and gold <clears throat> have I none. Don't look for silver and gold. Don't look for this. Look unto me, such as I have, give I unto you. I'm going to give you what I have. I've got the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus, rise, take up your bed and walk, ladies and gentlemen. When you're coming under pressure, when you're coming under troubles, when troubles hit your household, when troubles hit your, your, your family, when troubles hit your job, when troubles hit your finances, when your friends desert you, when your family laughs at you, when they uh, tease you and, and make a joke out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Paul tells us in Corinthians about the troubles that, that he encountered in Asia. He said, we received the death sentence. Paul, in his testimony, talks about the times he was bitten by serpents. He was, he was kicked. He was on shipwreck twice. He, he had to swim the Mediterranean Sea on twice, two occasions. He was beaten. He was left beaten with many stripes. He was stoned in Lystra, left for dead. Ladies and gentlemen, to follow Jesus means we must suffer persecution. But look at God, ladies and gentlemen. Look at God. Look at God. God is still on the throne, ladies and gentlemen. God is still on the throne. We get a witness from Job, ladies and gentlemen. We get a witness from Job. When you flip through the book of Job, we see that God restored everything that Job lost, gave him a new family, new children, uh, doubled what he had before, ladies and gentlemen, because Job did not cave in. He did not curse God. He did not turn away from the church. He did not backslide. He did not blame the preacher. He did not blame the prophet. He did not blame the people in the church. He did not blame his boss. He did not blame his wife. He did not blame his children. He did not point the finger at anyone else. He just waited on the Lord. He waited on the Lord. Job said, I, I will wait on the Lord. I will wait until my change comes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got sickness in your household, wait until your change comes. Your change is going to come. God knows, God knows, God knows. God says no temptation has taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. God knows how much you can take. You may say, well, I'm at my limit. I'm at my rope's end. I'm at my extremity. Well, man's extremity is God's opportunity. You might be on the end of your rope, but hold on. Hold on, I say, and trust in the Lord. Hold on. Don't turn your back on God. Don't, don't start drinking. Don't, don't, don't run and, and, and have an adulterous relationship. Don't take opioids. Don't take dope. Don't sneak, smoke reefer. Don't uh, uh, snort cocaine. Don't take methamphetamines. You just trust in the Lord. Tr stand still, God told Moses, and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still ladies and gentlemen, and see the salvation of the Lord. Let God know whose side you're on. It's mighty good to be on the Lord's side. Joshua said, as for me and my household, as for me and my household, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just looked at Job chapters 1 and 2, and we pull out that word hedge. We pull out that word hedge from Job chapter 1, verse 10. Hast thou not made an hedge about him, the devil asked God, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Verse 11, but put, put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath. He will curse thee to thy face. Ladies and gentlemen, in that first chapter of Job, we see that God has a hedge around Job. And we learn also that God is, has a hedge around each of us. God has a hedge around our household, around our spouse, around our children. God's got a hedge around your job. But we know that Satan, the accuser of the brethren, he will challenge God concerning us. We learn this from Job that Satan will challenge us. So ladies and gentlemen, when he challenges us, God will allow that challenge. But ladies and gentlemen, keep this in mind. Uh, uh, Jesus said, all that the Father has given unto me, I will in no wise cast out. God the Father has confidence that because you have put your trust in his son, Jesus Christ, God will keep you. God will keep you, ladies and gentlemen. God will keep you. So keep your mind on the Lord. Keep your mind on the Lord. No matter what you're going through, keep your mind on the Lord. Praise God. No matter what the test, keep your mind on the Lord. Keep your heart in God's hand. That was Job's secret. That was the secret to his success. That was the key to his, his success. Even when his three best friends, four of them, came to Job and tried to give a spiritual reason, a religious reason about why Job was suffering. And church folks will come to you and they will have their opinion about why you're going through what you're going through. But you just keep your mind on the Lord and the Lord will deliver you. Job had a hedge around himself and his family. And even though Job got up every morning, and sanctified his children. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you, keep, you, you keep praying for your children, and your children have to make a choice for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, Job did not fail when he lost his children. Job's children chose to be uh, rebellious. They chose to be party goers. They chose to live uh, worldly. But Job had confidence that God would deliver them deliver them. God is looking. He's looking in our children. He's looking in our grandchildren. And in my case, looking in my great-grandchildren. He's waiting for a sign from them about whether or not they're going to trust in the Lord. Your children cannot get to heaven based on your faith in God. But your faith in God can sanctify them, set them apart so that they can hear the word of God. Godly wives, you're, the way you live, the way you talk to your husband, the way you treat him can sanctify him. Your husband may be a, an abuser, an alcoholic, an alcoholic, uh, 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 a cusser. Uh, he may be a, a vile person, but you, just, you can sanctify him by the way you carry yourself, ladies and gentlemen. So continue walking as a godly wife. Husbands, you can sanctify your wife 
unto God to be saved. Your wife may have deserted you. She may be living with another man, but you keep praying for her and trusting in the Lord and, 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 and hoping that she will turn to the Lord. But I'm going to give you something today, and we're going to end here, and we'll pick this up uh, uh, in two more weeks. Uh, young Nathan is going to be preaching next week, and, and I want to tell you about a hedge of protection. You can build a hedge of protection around your loved ones. Every believer needs to listen to this. It's a principle that will work. Husband, if your wife isn't doing right, you can ask God to build a hedge of thorns around her, and she'll come back home. Wife, if you're crying and grieving because your husband's coming home smelling like some other woman's cheap perfume, you can build a hedge of thorns around your husband, and you can cause that woman to lose interest in him and cause him to lose interest in her, and he'll come crawling back home. And when he does, receive him just as he is. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have rebellious children. Your daughter may have not have called you in 10 years. Your son may be out there. Uh, he may be walking in drag. He may have crossed over, changed his sex. But you can bring him back to where he belongs by building a hedge of thorns around your family. Just as Job built a hedge of thorns and a hedge of protection around them, around his family, you can do the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, the hedge of protection, the hedge of thorns works. It works every time. And if there's any, any, any inkling of a love for God in your wife or in your husband or in your children, they will come back to their senses. Job's family chose his, his children chose to live ungodly. You can't get your children saved. But we're going to be teaching you in a couple of weeks how you can set them up for salvation, how you can help them to get saved. You can't save them, but you can help them to get saved by implementing this hedge of thorns and hedge of protection. Ladies and gentlemen, I can send you a prayer um, where you can build a hedge of thorns around your a uh, rebellious loved one, uh, you can build a hedge around your marriage. Husbands, build a hedge around your marriage. Ask God to protect your marriage. Husband, if you have a, a wayward eye, if you have a lust spirit uh, influencing you, and, and, and you've been peeping at other women, you can get yourself delivered. We're going to be talking about self-deliverance. Wife, if you're open to any man coming down the street uh, who, who waves at you, smiles at you because your husband ignores you, he doesn't even uh, bring you flowers anymore, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can get yourself delivered. You can shut down Satan's attacks against you, wife. You can shut down Satan's attacks against you, husband. Children, uh, if, if, if you're going to school and you're influenced by bad kids or kids who don't know Jesus and you're tempted to do what they do, smoke dope, drink liquor, uh, 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 chase the little girls into the bushes, you can shut that activity down. You know that's not the way you were raised. And you can ask God to build a hedge of thorns around you. This hedge of thorns that we see in Job chapter 1 Verses 10 and 11, this hedge will protect you, will protect your family. If there's sickness in your household, father, if there's sickness in your household, husband, you can build a hedge of thorns and protection around your wife. Wife, if your husband is sick, you can build a hedge of thorns and protection around your husband. You can build, parents, a hedge of thorns and protection around your children so that they can be protected until God delivers them. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, we can even build a hedge of thorns around our community. If your community is known for uh, uh, illegal activity, gambling, uh, adultery, uh, alcoholism, whatever, ladies and gentlemen, you can shut down that activity in your community. You can even shut down that activity in Washington, D.C., in the nation, or in your nation, wherever you are. So we just wanted to minister this to you. Let me just say this to you. God said in Ezekiel 
I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge that I should not destroy. But I found none. God is looking for just one person. One person in one family who will make up a hedge around that family and God will deliver that family. Listen to this. A certain man discovered that his wife was secretly seeing another man. She would meet him on business trips and spend long hours after work with him. For months she had neglected her home responsibilities, such as making any meals for her husband. He learned about the hedge of thorns that he could claim in prayer for his wife. And one day he used it. That evening when he got home from work, his wife was in the kitchen making their first meal in four months. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Here's another one. A wife learned that her husband was spending time with a younger woman. She learned further that he was planning to leave her and marry this younger woman. She was told how to pray for a hedge of thorns around her husband. The next evening, he received a phone call from the young woman telling him that she wanted to break off that relationship. Here's another one, ladies and gentlemen. A young, the wife of a young pastor left him and began working in a bar. She was planning to marry the barkeeper. The grieving husband learned how to pray for a hedge of thorns around his wife. And three days later, his wife called him up and was ready to return home. These things work, ladies and gentlemen. These things work. Uh, my son's not on with us today, but if he were on, I'd have him give you his testimony. When he was a teenager, uh, he was starting to do some things out there, running after the little girls and all that sort of thing, and he was just feeling his manhood. And then uh, I talked to him one day, and he said, hey, wait a minute, Dad, wait a minute, Dad. I, I just got to talk to this guy. I just got to talk to her. He said, and Dad, don't be building a hedge of thorns around me, please. He said, I just got to talk to this one. He said, Dad, don't build a hedge of thorns around me. He knew that if I built a hedge of thorns around him, he was through. It was through, and he can, he can witness uh, when he comes on the next time. Maybe we have him witness. He knew that if I prayed that hedge of thorns around him, he would be through. He would not be successful. Ladies and gentlemen, the hedge of thorns around your loved one is a hedge. It's not just a hedge of pretty little flowers. It's like, it's like well, Jackie and I, we picked a lot of blackberries this summer. We picked blackberries, and we got picked by all kinds of thorns. I mean, when you put your hand on a blackberry bush trying to pick blackberries, you get picked. You get hit by the thorns. As we used to say, those pickies are the pits. They will hurt you. A hedge of thorns, a hedge of uh, 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 briars uh, means that nothing can get in and nothing gets out. In other words, if you ask God to build a hedge of thorns around your uh, cheating husband, it, you reach a point, and he'll reach a point where his girlfriend cannot get to him. No matter how much he tries to see her, she cannot reach him. The hedge will prevent her from seeing him. And, and the hedge works the other way too. The hedge keeps the believer or your loved one from getting out, out of the ark of safety. He'll try with all his scheming to get to see her, but it will only result in frustration. And then he will say, I give up, I quit, I surrender. Then he'll reach a place, I repent. And then he'll return to where he belongs. We're going to be ministering next time on the book of Hosea. And we're going to look at Hosea's wife and the hedge. We're going to look at Hosea chapter 2, verses 6 and 7 where God built a hedge of thorns around Gomer, the wife of Hosea. And she left him for the men out in the streets. And Hosea uh, uh, loved his wife, and he trusted God. And he was, even though he was embarrassed and shamed, he prayed the hedge of thorns. And God built a hedge of thorns around her to the place where her lovers could not reach her, and she could not reach her lovers until she was so frustrated in her attempts to cheat against her husband. Every attempt resulted in frustration. 
until she came to her senses and she said, I will return to my first husband. I will return. And ladies and gentlemen, this hedge of thorns, which is also a hedge of protection, has caused many a man and woman and many a child to return to the Lord. Praise God. I see in the chat box many of you are saying, please send me the prayers that I can use, and I will be, se I will be sending you the prayers. I'll be sending you the prayers that you can use. Um, um, send me an email to LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. I'd rather you text me or send me your email, send me an email, because um, I don't always record or have access to the messages in the chat window. But send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or give me a call at 404-205-1101. Uh, type that in for me, Megan, please, 404-205-1101. Four zero four two zero five one one zero one. Send me a text message. I'll send you the prayers. You pray these prayers, ladies and gentlemen, and they will work for you. Next time, I will talk to you more about the prayer for the hedge of thorns or the hedge of protection, how it works, why it works, and then things you need to do as a follow-up to your prayer. There are certain things. It's not just praying the prayer. Oh, friends, there are certain things that you need to do as a follow-up to the prayer. For example, if your wife is cheating on you and you pray the prayer and she comes home, there are certain things you must say to her. And there's a certain way you talk to her. And you cannot bring back, bring up the offense or throw it in her face. You can't keep throwing it in her face. You've got to be forgiving like Jesus forgave on the cross. And you watch what God will do. He did it for Job. He'll do it for you. He did it for David. He did it for you. He did it for Paul and Silas. He did it for you. He did it for many, many, many. He did it for me on many occasions. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm one who practices self-deliverance. Self-deliverance means that if you know that Satan is working on you in a certain area and you're being tempted in a certain area, you can deliver yourself. You can even pray a hedge of thorns, a hedge of protection around yourself, and it works. You can get yourself delivered. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be angry with God. If that sickness has, has not left your household, don't let any bitterness or any anger enter into your spirit. You praise God and you rejoice and you just make a, a declaration, I'm going to wait until my change comes. Be like Job. Job says, I'm going to wait until my change comes. He says, I know that my Redeemer lives and I shall see him at the latter day standing upon the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that kind of faith that moves mountains. And God says, and I sought for a man among them or a woman, one person in your family. God is looking for one person in your family to make up the hedge. And he will do this. Hallelujah. He will do this. Remember, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. Father God, we thank you for this message. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord, for your word, that your word will not return until you void. Thank you for the online church. Thank you that you're reaching into households, God, all over the world. Thank you that you're healing and delivering and saving. Thank you for your love for us, God, and we bless you and we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. Now there might be somebody listening in, hallelujah, <clears throat> might be somebody listening in right now, and, and you need, uh, you want salvation. There might be, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stay online and pray for one another. There might be somebody listening in right now, and you want the gift 
of salvation. You want to give your life to Jesus. Uh, if so, just type in the chat window or, 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 or just uh, give me a sign uh, or un unmute your phone and say, I want to be saved. And if you've got someone in your family who wants to be saved today, let's get them saved today. And ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are listening to the recording if you have not received Jesus as your Savior and you want to be saved, be saved. <laughs> get saved. Get saved. Ask the Lord. Here's how you get the gift of salvation. Here's how you do it. And the Scripture says, the Word of God says, from Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So when you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you receive the gift of salvation. You receive the gift of salvation. Praise God. So I just want to know right now, is there anyone today you would like to be saved? Bring it to our attention. Bring it to our attention. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Thank God for his love. Praise God for who he is. He's the mighty God. He's the mighty God. Father God, move by your spirit. You said in your word, your eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove yourself strong on those whose hearts are perfect towards you. Lord God, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice, whether they're live with us or watching the recording, or listening to the recording, if they desire the gift of salvation, give them the gift of salvation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Here are your instructions. If you're seeking the gift of salvation, repeat this prayer after me. If you're not sure whether or not you're saved, repeat this prayer after me. Let's talk to God. Repeat this out loud to God. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I confess that I am a sinner, and I want to be saved. I believe with my whole heart that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he was buried in the grave. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe he ascended into heaven. I believe he's coming back soon. Lord, save me, I pray. I give my life to you, Lord, and I receive salvation this day by faith in the name of Jesus. Now, I thank you, Father, for saving me. I thank you for saving me. Now, Father, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and I thank you. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. Saints, praise God. What a mighty God we serve. That's awesome. That's wonderful. That's mighty. Praise God. We ask that you stay on, and, and we're going to bring our attention to anyone with a prayer need, anyone uh, with, with a, a, a testimony, anyone with questions. Praise God. Uh, those of you uh, in, in, in countries outside the United States and outside of this live program we um, want you to review the video review it again and again and if you have any questions I'll be glad to answer your questions send me an email Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com or call me at 404 205 1101 by the way we do not take up an offering we ask that you give your offering to your local church Give your offering. Help support your local church. Praise God. Praise God. Don't forget next week, please, you're in for a treat. Tune in next week. Young Nathan's going to be preaching. His mom's going to be moderating. You need to hear her testimony. You need to hear the testimony coming out of this household. Praise God. God bless you. We're going to end our recording, but you stay online.